Guys, my name is Ankush Gaurav and I welcome you to Gone To series. In the earlier tutorial, I explained the concept of MVC along with a real life analogy. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell what exactly is a Spring MVC framework and how it makes developers write web applications which are based on MVC guidelines. In short, the overall workflow of a Spring MVC web application. So let's start. Spring MVC is a web application development framework based on MVC guidelines. It's like any other popular MVC frameworks available till date like Stats2 and many others. But still, sometimes it becomes developer's first choice over others because of its support to a simple yet the most powerful feature and that is inversion of control or the dependency injection. If you don't know what is DI or inversion of control, you can go through first few tutorials of my series on Spring Framework. Alright, now let's start up with looking at how an overall web application developed using a Spring Framework looks like. So this is your application which you have developed using Spring MVC Framework. In this, you would have something called as a front controller. When an end user requests for a web page by putting some URL say this on the browser and hits enter, the request is received by this guy. This is the main guy who controls the complete application's flow and has many helpers around it to get the work done. Each helper is going to do a certain specific task and returns the result back to it. With the help of all its helpers, the front controller's job is to prepare and send the response, that is HTML along with data back to the client's browser. Immediately after getting the request, it passes on the request to one of its helper guy called as a handler mapping. Its job is to tell front controller what this request is all about. It will simply scan the URL and tell front controller the complete address of the guy who can generate data for the web page which an end user has requested for. It's something similar to the situation. You are standing on the roadside and someone comes to you and asks, Sir, can you please tell me the exact address of the guy who sells gift items in this area? And you tell him the exact address of the best gift item shop located in that area based on the gift item which he wants to purchase. And that's what the handler mapping does. Based on the information provided by handler mapping, the front controller just passes on the request to the specific guy who is going to generate the data for this specific web page request. This guy just prepares the data and typically creates a Java object to hold this data. It may contain some business logic to generate data or it may get data straight away from the database. Also, it may call some other Java classes to do this job. Once it prepares the Java object holding data, it sends it back to the front controller. In addition to the Java object holding data, it sends one more thing to the front controller and that is the name of the component which is going to retrieve data from this Java object along with mixing it with HTML to prepare the actual response. It's something similar to the situation. The person who asked for the address of the gift shop to you reaches to the shop as per your guidance. The shop guy gives him just the item but doesn't wrap it using a gift wrap. But while giving the item to the person, the shop guy tells the name of a person who can gift wrap this particular item. Now again, the person doesn't have the exact address of the guy who is going to gift wrap the item. But yes, he knows the name of the gift wrapper. In the same way, the front controller is having a Java object which is to be consumed by some component whose name is available. 
but not the actual address where it is located in the application in order to frame the response. So it sends this name to another helper guy called as a view resolver who tells the exact address of this guy to the front controller. Now the front controller has a Java object which is holding data and the exact address of the guy who is going to generate the actual response which is to be sent to the client's browser by putting up this data into an HTML code. So it sends the Java object to this guy and this guy simply retrieves the data from the Java object and puts it into the HTML code in the desired fashion and returns it to the front controller. The front controller now sends this as a response to the client's browser and the browser happily displays it. This guy is called as the view component. The Java object holding data is called as the model component. The guy who is returning the model object along with the name of the view is called as a controller. The front controller is also called as the dispatcher servlet in a Spring MVC framework. The view component is typically a GSP page, but you may use some other popular technologies as well instead of it, say Velocity, FreeMaker, etc. This is the complete workflow of a web application developed using Spring MVC framework. In the next tutorial, we'll set up the development environment for creating our first Spring MVC application. Guys, I thank you for liking my tutorials. I welcome all of your queries and comments below the video or just send an email to me on this ID. Your any sort of interaction makes me upload more and more tutorials. So keep doing that by commenting or sharing the information across. Like the video if you really liked it and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Conto Series and I'm going to catch you in my next tutorial.